Hey, welcome back to the Feral North devlog. It's been a really busy month. There's actually so much stuff to show you guys. I'm actually gonna have to condense it down because I won't be able to fit it all in one devlog. You know what? Hold up a sec. Just before we get into the devlog, I wanted to let you guys know that there's a few pieces of news a little bit later in the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Anyways, enjoy the devlog and I'll talk to you then. First up, I decided it was a good idea to lay out all the mechanics and obstacles along with their properties in order to have this as a sort of reference to myself when I'm designing levels, but also to make sure that there's a good variety in the way these things work. This, along with watching playtest videos over and over and over, left me thinking that there's actually not quite enough there just yet, so I wanted to introduce a few new ideas to the gameplay. So first up was to update the thistles. Previously you could just activate them and anything in their range would be impacted, but that's kind of boring if you basically always need to have them placed right next to their target, ping them and whatever is supposed to happen is going to happen. Alternatively there are animals that you can color that move around, but you don't really control where they go, it's mostly pre-scripted. So I wanted a way for you to kind of control the movement of color in the game. What I came up with is that you can actually now pick up flowers for a short while before they wither away and dissolve, respawning back at their original position. This brings a lot more movement to the puzzle design, something that was really missing before. In order to complement this new mechanic and the existing perspective puzzle, I've added a second type of hidden object that can't be unlocked by perspective, but instead is only accessible while you're holding a thistle, or some sort of color source. This way you need to activate the thistle and rush your way past the hidden object before it withers away. Of course, you can also combine this with perspective, where you need to carry a thistle across the object in order to reach the correct perspective on the other side for a permanent unlock. All in all, I have to say that I really like the added movement that this brings. I also wanted a pure door style mechanic, but one that the dog can handle on their own. The girl handles things like your traditional gate, which a dog obviously can't open, but if she's not around, then I kind of lose access to any kind of wall or door mechanic. So the idea was to essentially introduce a sort of door for the dog to interact with, using the new thistle mechanic, and it went through a few design iterations, but I eventually decided to go with this dark, viney, almost webby wall, something that kind of continues that symbology of anxiety, but that you can tear down using color. It's just another tool in my kind of level design toolbox to help keep things interesting, but I think it's a nice addition. So with these new mechanics in place, I feel there's a lot more variety to the gameplay. And keep in mind this is still really early, we're just talking about the tutorial and the first island here, and there's going to be a lot more room to build on this in the future, with a few new ideas that I actually came up with on a recent trip. So speaking of which, I took a trip to the Highlands this month with my wife and our dogs, and if you don't know, the setting of Farewell North was actually inspired by our own move to Scotland two years ago. We actually sold our house, our cars, everything we owned, and moved to Scotland with all these plans to travel, but we pretty much settled here just as COVID hit, so those plans had to be put on hold. Instead, all that inspiration has had to come from research and photos online, but I actually got to finally stand in the exact spot that inspired Feral North, right at the northern tip of mainland Scotland, in a place called John Oak Groats. This is the northern tip, and then there are the Orkney Islands above that, and you can see them from shore, assuming the weather's alright, which it wasn't really when we were there. And that's really where the whole of Feral North is set, so it was really cool to finally get to visit and see it all in person. It really got me thinking a lot about the game, and the whole trip was actually a great time for self-reflection, and that really fed back into the updates that you're seeing here. So there's one update in particular that I think is going to be pretty controversial, so let me give you a little bit of background. So I think when you're making a game it's really important to know what game you're making, and I know that sounds absolutely blatantly obvious, but just hear me out for a second. You see, Feral North could arguably be considered several different types of games. You could say it's an adventure game or a puzzle game, it has elements of platforming and stealth, it's technically an open world. And it's obviously okay to incorporate elements from multiple genres, but you definitely don't want to try to do everything because you'll just end up with a way over scope game that doesn't really do anything well. So for me, the gameplay element that was the least interesting to the game that I was trying to make was platforming. And the jumping was causing all kinds of problems for me in the level design. Since you can swim and you can jump all over, playtesters were finding all kinds of content skips that would break the game, and I was spending way too much time fixing these up just for a 20 to 30 minute demo, never mind the whole game. Quadruped jumping systems are really difficult to get right in the first place, and honestly I don't think I've ever played a game with a free jump system and a quadruped character that did a really good job of this, and I've played a lot. Add to that fact that basically wherever you go, the girl needs to be able to jump, climb, follow, or at least not get stuck, and it just becomes way too complicated for something that's not even important to the game. So I made, again, what I think is a controversial decision, to remove free jumping because I just don't think it adds anything fun, and I'm not trying to make a platformer and it was taking up way too large a portion of my time to fix up all these skips that players are finding with it. A couple Discord members made some suggestions to check out games like Twilight Princess during the wolf sections, or the trailer for a game called Stray, where you play as a cat and there's this really cool jump mechanic. So I did some prototyping and came up with something that I think is a really nice balance. 
Basically, as you play the game, there are these sensors that are looking for suitable jump targets, basically platforms at a different elevation or even water. And a little icon shows up when you can jump, and if you do jump, uh, exactly where you're going to land. Hitting the jump button then triggers the jump, and through the use of a little bit of math, I'm able to have the player kind of land exactly where it's shown that they're going to. I was actually really inspired by Freya Holmer's Bezier Curve demonstration video, I'll leave a link to it down below. If you haven't seen it, it's this beautifully animated introduction to Bezier Curves, and as I was watching the animations, I realized that they're basically the exact shape I was trying to create for the jump animation. By the way, I always get comments asking how to learn shaders. Go check out Freya's channel, her content's amazing and she's a genius. So as you can see, as you move throughout the world, there are these rays that kind of cast out from the player to detect any suitable jump targets. These are looking for things like distance, height, landing angle, and a bunch of other things. Assuming these rays pass all their checks and it's able to find a suitable target, it'll show the jump indicator letting you know where you're going to land, and if you jump, the curve of the jump is then dynamically calculated to match the height and length of the jump. These four red dots sort of demonstrate this, they're the handles or control points of the Bezier curve, which then determine the shape of the jump. I basically set up generic template curves for jumping up, jumping down, and jumping forward, and then I adjust them when you jump based on the real-time data. This still allows for some jump gameplay, but gives me, as the level designer, more freedom in the way I design levels because I don't need to worry about players jumping all over the place and skipping content. Now, before anyone gets too upset about this, just understand that there's actually a ton of games that do this already and you may not have thought about it. We already mentioned games like Stray and Twilight Princess, but there's also games like A Plague Tale Innocence, which have this exact system where you can only jump at certain predefined, almost scripted locations and others like Hellblade or God of War, and really the majority of stealth games, where you don't even have a jump button. These games have amazing level design, and a big part of that is that they place these kind of restrictions on the movements, so you're able to better control how players move through the levels. So, to be honest, playtesters have had mixed reactions so far, but most of them had actually played with the old system, and they agree that the new system is better, although they miss sort of having just a jump button to like idly press when they're running from A to B. I do really believe though in the long run that the ability to jump whenever you want just isn't necessary for Feral North, and the game is going to be much better without it. There's so many more updates to share, but the final one I'm going to leave you with is that I've finally started working on adding photo mode to the game. It's been a really fun project, I've been streaming it over on Twitch, something that I can kind of keep building on each stream, and it's been a lot of fun. Unity actually open sourced a photo mode demo recently, so I used that as a sh kind of shortcut to kickstart the project. But since then we've been making a ton of changes to it, building off what Unity created, and I think it's going to turn out really nicely. Feel free to tune in, I usually stream Wednesday evenings and Friday mornings UK time over at twitch.tv slash farewellnorth. Okay, as mentioned, there are three pieces of news. So thing number one is that we are going to run a Discord game jam. So it's going to be game jam slash art jam. So there's going to be two categories with winners in each. There'll be a shared theme, they'll run the same amount of time, but you can just enter whichever category you're interested in. You can create any kind of art or game that you like. There's going to be a specific theme that's released tonight at the end of the voting period. So you want to help vote, you can join the Discord down below. The jam is going to start midnight Friday night, Saturday morning, and it's going to go until Sunday, September 26th at midnight. So it's eight days. And like I said, so you can make any kind of art or any kind of game that you like. There'll be winners in, in each category. Winners will receive a Steam gift card, a special Discord role, Twitch VIP role, that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, links down below, and I hope to see what you come up with. Thing number two. So you can now sign up for the demo beta. This is over on Discord again. Some people message me asking for things like email or different platforms. I'm sorry, it just ends up being a lot of work to manage sending up Steam keys and gathering feedback and everything. So it's going to be exclusively exclusively for Discord for the time being. I'm sorry if that's not your thing, but the public demo is going to come sooner than later anyways. So just be patient. In terms of the beta, the way that this is going to work is that every week I'm releasing it to more and more people so I can incorporate your feedback, make some improvements, send it up to the next batch and actually test and improve the game over time. Things have been going really well, so it's time to move it to the beta phase. So join the Discord, you'll find a Google form there, fill that out, and then every week I'm just going to add people randomly to the group. So if you're interested in testing, that's how you do it. And thing number three, this is a big one, you can wishlist the game on Steam. I know that's not really news, but it is really important. It really helps us indie devs because it lets Steam know that there's an audience for the game and the game is worth showing to people. So it just, it means a ton. So if you haven't done it already, there's a link down below. Um, you can just hit that, add to wishlist. It's free, costs you nothing, and it really helps me a lot. Anyway, there's a lot more that I couldn't fit into this devlog, but as always, I really appreciate all your support, your comments are super encouraging, and I look forward to chatting you down below. Don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam, come join the Discord if you want to help beta test or you want to join the jam this weekend, but otherwise, I'll see you next time.